Hey there, my name is Corky Miller. I'm going to go over with you the SC301 EKG, um, general principles, and overall use. Okay, give me one moment. First, we're going to look at the user manual for the SC301 using an electronic document. One of the nice features if you do control F is control find feature. And right now we're going to highlight the goal of disposable electrodes. This is what most people use in common base area. So a lot of people are using for resting EKGs, they'll do a disposable electrode and have the adapters connected to the leads. Adapters come in all shapes and sizes. It is very important to make sure that you have good clean skin. Attaching to the disposable electrode, make sure that electrode gel has a good adherence to the skin, and you want there to be good connectivity between the skin, the electrode gel, and the adapters, and the metal part of the adapters, because that's when going to carry, that's what's going to carry the electrical signal from the patient to the EKG. Um, while we're in this area, just as a FYI, while it is known normal practice to put the limb leads down on the forearms on the legs that is for reusable electrodes or disposable electrodes it is recommended to put them on the deltoid area so if you're having difficulty acquiring signal that might be somewhere to look at okay another item that we're going to view is video on how to place the um V1 through V6, and I have to talk over this video because the audio is not carrying over. So on this video, you're going to have the V1 and the V2 on either side of the sternum towards the nipple line. You're going to skip V3. And you're going to focus on the V4. You're looking for that hollow point on the collarbone. And you're going to draw that down towards below the chest area, whether below the nipple line. So where the hollow point and that muscle is, that's where you're going to put the V4. And then the V3 is going to be in between the V2 and the V4. So you're going to drag it all the way down. So you want to have that kind of swoop line going through. So in between V4 and V5, there could be a large gap. This is okay. We're going on proper placement. So for the V5, your point of reference is going to be the armpit. Looking for the armpit notch right here, and you're going to draw down. The draw is swooping up because you're following the curvature. Where that armpit and that swoop meet, that's where you're going to pin put the V5. So right now there's a wide gap, but on a smaller patient, this gap's not going to be so big, but it's okay because that's the proper placement of the V5 on this. And then on the V6, is going to be right on, if you cut the body in half, right where the midpoint is, so past the armpit or towards end of the rib cage, that's where the V6 is going to go. And that would be the proximal replacement for the EKG leads. Now we're going to switch over to the um, operation of the unit itself. Close my camera, but you'll still be able to hear me. I got to switch cameras. Still be able to hear me. I'm just bringing up the presentation now. Okay, so this is your SC301. This is your SC301. It, it is a portable EKG unit. It is touchscreen and it is water typed. Power buttons over here. It says where the leads go. 
to open the door, you're going to press this down and this pops open the door. I'll show you how to load the paper. Thermal paper comes in a roll like this, and you also have a notch with the gear. It's the way this roller is designed is it only has one way it can be put in. So this roll goes in like that. So we're just going to put the paper, slide that in so it is aligned. Slide that in, pull this out. And you want this, I have the wrong way. You want the paper, your thermal contact is right here. So you want thermal paper to read out like this. It's going to print here. So in the roller, down, there we go. And it sticks out like that. Okay. For this, on the backhand side, this is where the battery goes. We're going to demonstrate how to put that in. The battery is here. It's going to be inserted like so. This gets pushed down. In your guide, you have a screwdriver and this tiny little screw. It's only the one screw you need to worry about. You close this up, push this down, screw this into place. If you ever need service on this unit or you have any questions and they ask for a serial number, this is the barcode sticker that they're going to talk about. The model is an SC301, and when they ask for the serial number, that serial number is below the barcode. So if you ever need to do service on this, they're looking for this number here, and this to help reflect warranty status. Um, top part of the unit, this charger port cable here, we're going to use this to power the unit. So we have an adapter, comes like so, and it plugs into a normal hospital grade power cord, plugs in here. And this goes here. You plug it in. These lights mean different things. This means that the battery is charging. I'm going to push it to turn on the unit. You can see the wheel spinning, so it is turning on. Okay. And it's just for some. See if I can get the glare to go away. Okay. Let's go over this. So right now your battery indicator charger is here. So it detects the battery and it is charging. If it wasn't charging and it was just running on battery power, it would show you the battery like this and show you what kind of strength it has. So this is almost charged. I'll plug it back in for this purpose. This little green guy right here is your patient information. ID can be whatever you're using for reference. You enter the name, gender, date of birth. Normally, if you're doing anything, it might need at least an ID. This is touch screen, so you just have to touch and enter, click OK. So we have our ID there. Uh, all our leads here are showing that the leads are off. If they're yellow, it's letting you know there needs to be attention to them. It also gives an overall lead off. We're going to fix that in a second. Um, you have filters here. You have printing speeds. You can also go into setup and go through some other things like your work mode. And I'll let you know what kind of display style you're using, if you have your preview on and off. You can go into record info, how you want it recorded. Their display and the record can be two different things. And if that is confusing to you, you want to make sure that you have it. Um, thermal device, you can also connect to a HP printer, but for this purpose, we're using a thermal printer. And Shows us our speed and our sample time. Sample time is normally 10 seconds. Um, there is no paper marker for this. And that looks all good. And then go here. 
We have a simulator set up for these demonstration purposes. Your connector and your unit only go in one way. So it's also designed for the small parts to be at the top area. So you just plug that in here. And it's going to let us know if there's any adapters that we need to change. So it looks like our limb leads, which should be one, two, three. Those are OK, but we're having some difficulty on our V1 through V6. So while the other ones combine, the V1 through V6 are looking directly at those chests. So I'm just going to make sure that those are secure. Okay, and now as we're getting that set up, looks like V1, 2, 5, and 6 row cage. You need to focus on the V4 and the V3. Those are the ones that are highlighted. So, Okay, gave us a little beep, letting us know the signal is being received on all of the leads. We have the print stop button ready to go. So when we're ready to record, we just hit this button and it's gonna print out for us. First it does the rhythm, which we'll go over in a second. And then it does the information and the analysis. Yeah. So now when you're done, you can just tear the paper off like that and it's ready for another EKG. So before we finish, just to highlight some information here. So this display style and print style is basically called a three by four plus one R. And if you look one, two, one, two, three, four, there are four columns. That's the three by four three lines plus the one R I have lead two again down here, but it's going all the way across, which can be used for calculation purposes if they want to look at that. Also down on the bottom of the strip, you have all the filters you're using, the speed, the intensity, and the algorithm that's being applied to this strip. Over here, the only information we entered was the ID, which is here, but all your patient information, the date of birth, the age, that would appear here. And then your analysis information, your QT, QTC can be found here. Um, your heart rate, your pulse rate, your QRS interval, that is there. And because this is on auto, it's also showing us what the analysis information is. Okay. I hope this was very useful for you. Going to transfer back. Thank you so much for listening to the study. Please let us know if you need anything else. And I hope you have a great day.